In this lecture, we will first focus on existence and uniqueness of solutions. Now, so far, we have actually taken the existence and the uniqueness of solutions to x dot is equal to f of x completely for granted. Consider the equation x dot is equal to x to the third starting from x of 0 is equal to 0. The point x is equal to 0 is a fixed point. So x of t is equal to 0 is a solution for all t. We can also go ahead and find another solution. We start by separating the variables and integrating to find. So evaluating the integral of x to the minus a third and the integral of dt, we get 3 on 2 x to the 2 thirds is equal to t plus an arbitrary constant. So with the initial condition x of 0 is equal to 0, we get c1 is equal to 0. So x of t is equal to 2 thirds t to the power of 3 on 2 is another solution to this differential equation. So we have a situation where we actually have two solutions to the differential equation. One is x of t is equal to 0 and the other is that x of t is equal to 2 thirds of t to the power 3 on 2. Here are some notes. The first point is that the geometric approach actually fails when we do not have uniqueness of solutions to the differential equation. If a phase point starts at the origin, then does it stay at the origin for all time or does it move according to the solution that we found that is x of t is equal to two thirds of t to the power of 3 on 2. Now let's take a slightly closer look at the vector field. So we now go ahead and plot x dot versus x. That's the plot of x dot versus x and we find that the fixed point would be repelling from both ends. So note that the fixed point x star is equal to 0 is in fact an unstable fixed point. Okay, so let's set out a much more challenging exercise for you. Can you go ahead and show that the initial value problem x dot is equal to x to the third where x of 0 is equal to 0 actually has an infinite number of solutions. Now let's go ahead and state a theorem that provides sufficient conditions for the existence and the uniqueness of solutions to x dot is equal to f of x. So let's call this the existence and the uniqueness theorem. Consider the initial value problem x dot is equal to f of x where x of 0 is equal to x naught and suppose that f of x and f prime of x are continuous on an open interval r of the x-axis and suppose that x naught is a point in r then the initial value problem has a solution x of t on some interval minus t to t about t is equal to 0 and the solution is unique. So let's take a minute to just absorb this theorem. What does it really tell us and how can we translate it into more plain English? So essentially what the theorem says is that if f of x is smooth enough then the solutions will exist and they will be unique. But there is actually no guarantee that the solutions will exist forever. Now this is a really important point to remember. So we are talking about the existence and the uniqueness of the solution. But remember that at this point of time, we may not be able to guarantee that the solution will actually exist forever. It may only exist for a short period of time. 
Now let's consider an example. Let's look into the existence and the uniqueness of solutions to the initial value problem x dot is equal to 1 plus x squared where x of 0 is x naught. In this example f of x is 1 plus x squared so the function is continuous and has a continuous derivative for all x. The theorem says that solutions would exist and be unique for any initial condition x naught. However, the theorem does not say that the solutions will exist for all time. So let us consider x of 0 is equal to 0. We separate the variables. So we get dx divided by 1 plus x squared. We integrate that and we integrate dt. This gives us the tan inverse of x is equal to t plus an arbitrary constant. With x of 0 is equal to 0, we get c1 is equal to 0. So x of t is equal to tan t turns out to be a solution for this initial value problem. But the solutions will only exist for t when t is actually sandwiched between pi on 2 and minus pi on 2. As x of t will tend to plus or minus infinity as t tends to plus or minus pi on 2. For x of 0 is equal to 0, there is in fact no solution outside the above time interval. So essentially we have an example here where the solutions exist but they only exist for a certain time interval. Our next subheading is the impossibility of oscillations. By now we are quite familiar that fixed points dominate the dynamics of x dot is equal to f of x. So trajectories either approach a fixed point or they diverge to plus or minus infinity. In fact, these are the only options for a vector field on the real line. Trajectories are forced to either increase or decrease monotonically or actually just remain constant. So geometrically speaking, if we plot x dot versus x, that's an arbitrary function f of x, and we can identify the stable and the unstable fixed points. So geometrically speaking, a phase point actually never reverses direction. And this is one key point to note. Here are some notes. We can regard a fixed point as an equilibrium solution. So the approach to equilibrium is always monotonic. So overshoot damped oscillations and undamped oscillations are not possible. So there are actually no periodic solutions to x dot is equal to f of x. And this is a really key point, so we highlight it. The reason, in fact, is topological. It reflects the fact that x dot is equal to f of x represents a flow on a line. So flowing monotonically on a line will actually never get you back to your starting point. If we were in fact dealing with a circle rather than with a line, then we can return to our starting place. So in that sense, vector fields on the circle 
can actually exhibit periodic solutions. Now, there were two main points that we wanted to make in this lecture. Point number one was about the existence and the uniqueness of solutions. There is often a tendency to actually take the existence and uniqueness a little bit for granted. So to that end, we produced two examples. In one example, we showed that you could actually have multiple solutions. In the second example, we showed that while the solution would exist, it would not necessarily exist for all time. Okay. So I think this is more a question of being aware and being careful that when you actually have a differential equation, please do spend a little bit of time thinking both about existence and uniqueness. The second point that we made was about the impossibility of oscillations. Now essentially when you're dealing with one dimensional flows, if you have a flow on a line, then you're not really going to come back to the same place again. So the trajectories would either go off to plus minus infinity or would go towards a fixed point. Of course if you're dealing with flows on a circle, you could have oscillations. But the main point to remember here is that you would not get oscillations in a one-dimensional equation of the form x dot is equal to f of x as long as it was flowing on the real line.